this charming piece I got as sort of a gift um, from friends of mine. It's uh, my radio peeps. It's David Jones. He's really popular in radio, but the funny thing is, is his wife, Sherry, is like just super popular and humankind. You meet her and you just instantly go, oh, she's so cool. So anyway, I want to thank them both for this lovely piece. They said, you know, hey, have it. It wasn't fitting in their style. They weren't really using it. I am going to bring it back to life, so why not? It's a little sticker. Uh, from everything I can tell, it is actually a 1939 piece. The reason I could tell was because it's M-I-C-H period, so it didn't have the whole Michigan, and that's what narrowed it down to 1939 is this piece. Not to mention, I mean, this kind of thing, the way it, it looks, it says 1939. So we're just gonna clean it up, but I'm not actually gonna strip it because it's not in horrible shape. Obviously it was cared for, it's just, you know, hey, you're old enough, it happens. So here's what we're gonna do. We're looking to see if it's a shlack on top because that would take some different cleaning methods that I'm not actually as well versed at. The cool thing is, is to find that out, one of the things they do when they do shellac is they, it's natural and they just use it with a denatured alcohol so if you were to put alcohol on these things, it would get gooey, and that's how you could tell you had the schlack. Um, I don't have denatured alcohol on hand. I have, because it's COVID times, everybody's got this, I've got a spray bottle of an isopropyl or AKA rubbing alcohol. It's actually the one that you use for disinfectant. Are they interchangeable? Yes and no. Uh, denatured alcohol, here's a, total novice, not an expert's uh, thoughts on this. Uh, denatured alcohol is really, really strong, but it's got some other things in it, not necessarily good for anything, um, but it is good for woodworking, cleaning things, and getting stuff out of that. It's sort of a milder stripper. It's good for getting those top coats off and stuff without actually going further into it, which is what I wanna do here. Uh, the isopropyl, or rubbing alcohol as we know it, it's more like the denatured alcohol in the sense that it can be used to clean things. Um, it isn't as strong as the denatured alcohol, but it also doesn't have the other residual stuff in it that is super bad. So if you were to do an electronics clean, you know, well, you shouldn't get them all messed up in any way, shape, or form. An icy propyl could be used in that way. A denatured certainly couldn't. But um, we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot and see what happens to find out if we've got the shellac or not. And all you do is spray it on there. And a lot of yuck is coming off, which is what we're gonna do eventually anyway. But what we're looking is does what's left behind, does it start to feel gooey? And it's not. So what's the big deal if it's shellac or not? Good question. It's not actually a bad thing if it is schlack. That's all natural. Yes, it is. Go ahead and look it up. Um, but here's the thing. They take the bug poop and they mix it with denatured alcohol and then they put it on the piece of wood and it's great for blocking tannins from coming up. However, it is not very durable. So you have to put a top coat on it because otherwise it would get stained or messed with anytime it comes in contact with another alcohol for sure. So why not just treat it as if everything was slack and just carry on? Well, unfortunately, if you have a buildup of many of today's modern cleaners or furniture polishes as they're called, those contain silicones that get left behind. If you try to put something over it, you'll get some bubbling and it's just nasty and it doesn't work. So you really have to remove those. Thinking that is what I had, I didn't treat it like it was just a schlack. I went ahead and treated it was like first a big layer of the yuck, in which case I needed to really get that cleaned off. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. The rest is as follows. First, I'm gonna go ahead and try to use mineral spirits on it, and then I'll use some alcohol to get the residuals of the mineral spirits off. Well, unfortunately, I am finding out, as you can see, that it is a shellac on top. I kind of thought it would be because, you know, after all the age of the item, shellac was much more popular then. And now I'm starting to get into the shellac and I'm trying to get myself to a smooth point where I can finally just start to stain and go on. 
but not there yet. But when you're doing this, you'll feel it. You'll feel it and you'll be like, oh, that's gooey. And you just have to keep rubbing. I have now got to sand this, but I don't want to do any further damage to it. So I'm making sure I'm using a very light 320 grit and I'm sanding by hand. A slight misstep here, not necessarily with the product, but the choice of gloss. The age of the piece means I couldn't go with a flat, but instead of a gloss that got too shiny, I should have used a semi-gloss. Still though, I liked how it turned out. Um, I also am using an oil base this time because I had mineral spirits on hand anyway, so why not? They go on much easier. I am stirring it because, you know, shaking it causes bubbles, but you have to stir it to get the little gunk and tannin, I guess, the the tint on the bottom, searching for words here, but you know what I mean. load it down to normal speed so I could show you this technique I picked up from Paul's DIY solutions. You start in the middle of a piece and pull one way then the other way. Then you go and do a feather stroke which is just lightly brushing down the entire length of it and of course you're also going with the grain. But you do this and then walk away. You don't keep coming back to it. We have got our second coat is dry and generally speaking if you're looking at it it looks great um, closer inspection if you can kind of see here maybe not so well that you know there's just little drift lines that seems like I kind of missed them they would kind of get a better view of it at any rate, I am going to have to do one more coat, so it'll be a third coat on the top. Very light sanding, minor issues on this. Overall, looking pretty good. Well, in the end, I sure did learn a lot from this vintage pedestal table, often called a wine table, which is kind of funny because I learned a lot about alcohol, not the type you drink. Um, I also learned about the use of shellacs and how cool they are, as well as why you might not want to use furniture polish anymore because it leaves behind residual silicone so hmm but biggest thing i hope you learned is from my mistakes so it saves you time thanks for watching and please subscribe to the asking spot